So I have to admit something. Way back when I started messing around with the idea of getting all this printing stuff to print for my own brand and then maybe starting a print shop on top of that, I was talking with a friend about it and they were like, yeah, that's a great idea, man, but when you open up that print shop portion of it, good luck printing for your own brand. And I was like, shit, no, dude, I'm gonna be able to print this many customer jobs a day for this amount of time and then move over to printing my own stuff for this amount of time, get this many pieces done, and if it comes down to it, my stuff's gonna get priority and blah, 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 all this stupid stuff. And I'm here to say I was 100% wrong about that. Me being the overconfident dumbass that I am, I figured I'd be able to jump into screen printing and just start knocking stuff out right off the bat and be like a pro within a week. And uh, well, that's definitely not the way it worked out. There is so much to know about it, it is crazy. And yes, I'm definitely starting to acquire some solid skills now, but I'm still barely scratching the surface of this thing. There's all that time learning the process and then opening up the doors to the print shop side of things and learning a whole bunch of other stuff like managing jobs and customer service and inventory management, and emails and delegating tasks and time management throughout the day is a huge one. All this stuff adding up just meant that printing stuff for the brand was not even a thought in my mind for the first little while. Because I'll be honest, taking all that stuff on at once was incredibly overwhelming. And let's be frank here, a real punch in the dick to my confidence and my work ethic. But today that all changes. Now that I've been doing this for a little while, everything has become a lot less overwhelming. I've gotten through the early growing pains of learning how to print. I've learned how to manage my time to get jobs printed quickly and efficiently and deliver those crispy prints. And how to stay on top of all the quotes and customer service and emails and inventory and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm only one guy operating what probably should be a three-man print shop at this point, so I'm working 12 to 14 hour days every single day, and I do what I gotta do to make sure this stuff gets done. Oh, and let's not forget making these videos. That's a whole other job in itself. But I must be getting a little bit faster or more efficient or something because I'm starting to notice that I'm getting a little bit more extra time throughout the day and even getting whole extra days where I've got well, uh, pretty much nothing to do. I should probably take that time to relax and do things like normal people do. <laughs> nope, I'm gonna fill that time with making 38 ride co gear again. Mm. I have felt so shitty for having to neglect this for so long, but I know I've made the right choices along the way. Sometimes you gotta make sacrifices, and today we can finally put a stop to that and make some cool new stuff. I say new, but we are bringing back two of the original designs with a bit of a twist. We're bringing back the OG T and the OG hoodie from the original launch almost two years ago. This time we're bringing them out in two colorways, both with updated garments that are much better than the originals. And now they're gonna have these brand new, super cool little hem tags I had made up that are actually gonna be on every single 38 Ride Co. piece from here on out. And there is also one more piece that's gonna be coming out with this, but that's gonna be in a video on its own because it's gonna be a brand new, never before seen thing and a whole new print process that I've never done before, so next one. But yeah, I'm bringing these back because they've been highly requested by our customers. Obviously, it's not the most spectacular design we've ever done, but as far as sales go, these are within the top three favorites. I've also never done a re-release and I was like dead set against that for a long time because I like to keep things exclusive, make a certain finite amount of designs and sell it out and then once it's gone, it's gone. To me, I just like that exclusivity and it makes everything a little bit more special. But someone who I've known in the industry for oh shit like 20 years basically said that I need to get over myself and put that behind me and that I need to have a staple piece with my logo on it that lasts over time. I thought about it and I was like, yeah, that makes total sense because I thought about brands like DC, Fox, and so on. How many t-shirts have you seen them make with just their logo slapped on it and nothing else? In your lifetime, hundreds if not thousands and they're still cool. So I've decided these are gonna be my recurring staples. I have figured out a way to kind of keep them a little bit exclusive so I'm not straying too far from what I originally intended but you're gonna have to wait to see how I do that. That's a secret. So we're gonna walk you through how some premium streetwear garments get made today. I feel like I've been talking forever. Let's get to work. Roll that B-roll. The best plan of action here is to start with the hoodies first because those are all getting white print and then the tees are getting a color change, so we'll do those last. The hoodies are gonna require chest print, both sleeves, and the neck label. And no longer are we gonna have problems with printing sleeves ever again like we did last time. Because I just spent a small fortune at Action Engineering the other day and we got these 
beefy as hell aluminum sleeve pallets to cover the whole press. There ain't no way I'm warping one of these things. You can probably drive a truck over one of these and it'd be all right. And for what these things cost, I expect them to be that good. And while I was bent over letting them give it to me dry, I figured, you know what? We might as well spring for this thing too. We got the badass manual roller squeegee while I was at it, so get to try that thing out today. I think I'll make a review video on that thing a little bit down the road after I've had a chance to mess with it for a little while, but so far it seems pretty good. Anyways, I'm gonna shut up. Let's start printing. Oh, fan, give it to me. Whose bright idea was it to make so many of these? All the chest prints are done, but what's crazy is I gotta run through these hoodies three more times yet because we gotta do left sleeve, right sleeve, neck label, and so on. So by the time these hoodies are done, uh, there's gonna be about 400 prints in total throughout them. And then we gotta do all the t-shirts. This is a slow moving process for one guy. I've been down here since 5 a.m., it's now 6 p.m., and uh, yeah, we barely even made a dent in this stuff. But I can tell you one thing, this, this camera device in my face, eats up a hell of a lot more time than just doing it without filming anything. So I've got my first press full of sleeves loaded up right now. I'm gonna knock those out before I pack it in, just kinda get a feel for these new pallets, and then it looks like we're gonna be doing two, maybe even three days worth of filming for this one, because I still have to finish all the printing, and then sew on all those hem tags by myself, and then heat press all of those prints, because I like that buttery smoothness. I, I just can't not do that, it's just, it's too amazing. And then fold, bag, and tag every single one of these, so. Got my work cut out for me. I'll tell you one thing, I'm gonna have a lot of footage by the end of this, so hopefully I make this a cool edit. Let's just go ahead to day two. So I should have just called it quits last night instead of trying to run off that small batch of hoodies after I was all tired. I fucked up three of them right out of the gate. <laughs> Didn't lay down anywhere enough adhesive on those pallets and got a little bit of shrinkage going on, so I ended up with some serious double imaging going on, so <laughs> yeah. God, me and sleeves just do not get along yet. But thankfully I caught it fast enough because when you're messing up premium level hoodies, those are expensive mistakes. So the other three, they were cool and today, we're definitely gonna cure that problem. I am going to bukkake those pallets with adhesive today and pre-flash all the sleeves so that hopefully I can get rid of the shrinking problem. <laughs> shrinking problem. I was in the pool! And since I have so many goddamn sleeves to do today, by the end of this, I should have all my sleeve woes behind me so that I don't do this ever again. <laughs> we hope, we hope. All right, let's get to work. I got through that first batch. I still messed up a couple even with those changes, but I figured out why. The pallets themselves, even though they were super tight, I was able to grab them and shimmy the crap out of them because I noticed that weird double image thing was happening more on this side than it was on this side, and that's because obviously it was moving laterally. And that is because these mounting clamps are so freaking huge with these massive knobs hanging down underneath them. You can't actually bring this front one up forward to spread the load out to keep it from shimmying like that because you 100% could not get a sleeve on there. I tried, and obviously because the front part of the sleeve that would be here is much narrower. There's just not enough material there to cover all that distance. So short-term review of these things, the pallets themselves otherwise are awesome. No deflection, no warpage obviously because they're big thick aluminum things, but this whole situation, that sucks. And I had a feeling it was gonna suck. So what I did for now is I grabbed a pair of channel lock pliers and I fucking cranked these knobs down as tight as they possibly could go. If I get real aggressive with it, I can kinda move them a little bit, but normal workflow situation, it should be all right. And I think for the long-term fix, because I've already been thinking about it, this just doesn't turn off. I'm gonna shim the insides of these things to take up some of that lateral slack because like I can stick my fingers in here right now, which is a crazy amount. And then on the front clamp at least, replace this knob with a near flush bolt so I can move this forward, spread out that load, and still be able we get a sleeve on there. So now let's hope these sleeve problems are behind me. I, I'm confident now. Let's continue this thing. <laughs> Thank you. 
wish I just printed white tees every day. First of all, because it's crispy as hell. Look at that color combo. And second, because it takes like a third of the amount of time and effort. It's so much better. Please, everybody, just order white tees from now on. My life will be amazing. So one more stage of printing left to go. We gotta knock out all the neck labels on all this stuff, which should go relatively fast. And if you remember that old sleeve palette that I warped the hell out of like a month ago, well, I turned that into a nifty little neck label palette. So this should probably make it even easier than it already is. So let's see if I can at least get the printing wrapped up today. I totally called it. This is turning into a three-day thing. Oh, holy hell, there goes another 12 hour day in here. Between printing all this stuff and keeping up with everything else going on in here, I'm spent. Two more things left though. I still gotta sew on all those labels and fold and package everything. <laughs> I can't wait to have a helper in here. Let's spin to day three. We are gonna wrap this up today. And last night I realized the insane amount of footage I've gotten for this thing so far. So in the interest of keeping this video from becoming an hour long, ridiculous, overly done thing, we're gonna get one of each of these pieces to the complete finish, ready to ship stage, and then I'm gonna do the rest off camera. So we'll start with hitting the prints with the heat press and the Teflon sheet because I want that ultra smooth, semi-gloss look to everything. Then sew on the hem tags with that extra little touch of radness on everything. Then fold and package it, ready to ship out the door. Let's do this. So for the tees, I've decided the hem label is gonna go somewhere around there at the bottom. I gotta figure out the exact measurements of that just yet. And then the hoodies, we're gonna slap it up right here at the center seam on top of the hood, I think. I think that'll be cool. I don't know, let's try it out. I've made like 10 attempts at getting this thing onto the hood properly and it's just, it's not happening. At least not with my skills. Because there's the string and the center seam on both sides and then by the time you have the label, there's a whole bunch of meat going into there underneath the uh, claw thingy on the machine. And no matter how I pin this thing on there, when I start sewing, it's just causing the label to get all crazy and twisted and bunched up. So getting a clean stitch through this, it ain't happening. And I also can't sit here for the next week trying to figure it out. So option B, we're gonna go ahead and put it down on the waistline like the t-shirts, call it a day. Oh, so pumped on adding that little detail to my stuff. Let's have a look at this stuff before we package it. Man, this stuff looks good. My opinion might be a little biased, but eh. I guess let's start packaging this stuff. Well, except for this one. Had to put my new favorite shirt on. There we go. Not gonna lie, I created so much more work for myself by adding those hem tags to everything. It's gonna take me forever to sew these things on and keep up with the sewing as I make more stuff, but the detail those things add is just, oh, so good. So yeah, now I've got a taste of what it's like to have my stuff completely made in house for the first time, and I gotta tell you, it's pretty goddamn exhilarating. I'm not gonna lie to you, it is a ton of work and stress between this and the print shop, and the last few days have been a real test of my will, but uh, knowing now that I have full control over every single thing that happens with my brand just makes me feel so good, and that's really the main reason I set this whole place out to begin with. But I'm sure it's gonna get a whole lot easier once I get into a bit of a routine and get into the flow of the whole thing and get a few employees in here, which now I know I sorely need, and it's gonna just keep meaning bigger and better things for the brand itself, so. Fucking pumped. And I'm pretty pumped to have these two staple pieces from now on, which is great for brand recognition. To be honest, it's one of my favorite things. And towards the start of the video, I said something about keeping these things exclusive somehow, and I was just gonna keep that a secret. That was really me just being a dick, and I'm just saving it for you people who stuck around at the end of this video. <laughs> so the game plan is gonna be to keep the black ones around forever, just because everyone wants a black shirt. That's, that's a given, you gotta do that. But for the other color of shirt and hoodie, like this one I'm wearing here, what we're gonna do is make a finite amount, and then once they sell out, we're gonna switch to a different color combo of some kind, whatever it may be, sell that one, 
one out, switch to a different color combo, and just keep doing that and rotating them out until we run out of color combinations, and then we can start over again. So you might not ever see this shirt again for two years or so, because there is a lot of different color combinations you can do between print and shirt colors. So yeah, I think that's a cool little way of keeping these things kind of exclusive, even though it is gonna be something that sticks around for a little while. What will the next combo be? I've got a couple ideas, but if you got some suggestions, type them down below, maybe we'll get them. And as for the release date on this stuff, it's not coming out just yet, because like I said earlier in the video, we still gotta make that one more piece, and that piece, I can guarantee you, is gonna be the coolest one of the bunch, and it's also gonna be our first time printing water base. So we're gonna do that in the video next week, and uh, after that, this stuff will all come out. So tune in next week to see the cool shit we're gonna make, and then at the end of that, you just might be able to get this stuff. But I'm gonna wrap this thing up, because I've got a shitload more tags to sew on, and even more folding and bagging to do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little look at the brand going fully DIY in-house for the first time. I know I'm super pumped on it, and it just means bigger and better things for the future from here on out. So make sure you guys like and subscribe, click all the links and stuff down below. We'll see you again in the next one.